Hey, Mo, how are you? Hey, Cal. Uh, I want to go back to that last drive of the game versus the Lions. I mean, you guys are playing from behind, only down a touchdown, under a minute to play, and then Amari Rodgers brings the ball out of the end zone. Um, so instead of having it at the 25, you now have it at the 22, and that might not seem that big of a deal, but um, bringing it out of the end zone sheds seven seconds off the clock when you guys are playing behind and time necessarily isn't on your side. I'm curious, um, and, and of course that doesn't matter in hindsight because you know Jordan Love threw the interception, but I'm curious if this was planned for Amari to bring it out or if there was an awareness issue on the play or what the thought process was bringing that ball out. It's a absolutely huge issue. Uh, we do not want to bring the ball out in that situation. We want to keep the ball in at all costs. Um, sometimes young returners get lost as far as where they are. That ball came off kind of funky. Uh, it did not have the traditional trajectory. So if you notice, he came forward only to go back and uh, uh, he lost where he was. But absolutely, you have to have the wherewithal. You have to have uh, that spatial awareness to know uh, the situation, know that you're in the box. Uh, these are things we talk about in practice. So it was a great teachable moment for him and everyone else that was on the team. So that, that was huge. It's, it's, it's not, it, it wasn't glossed over. Rob Domofsky. Hey, Molly, you got me? Yes, sir. Hey, there's a few of us on this call that have been around a long time. And, and when, when Mike Holmgren was here and, and even some other coaches, they would get to the playoffs and they would use everybody on special teams, starters, you know, whoever. I realize the game's different now, but is there any more inclination to do that now that, you know, it's it's in a do or die situation? Yeah, we always want to use whoever's available to us. Uh, uh, whoever's available to us, we will use them and uh, excited about using them. Mike Spofford. Hey, Mo. Um, we saw, obviously, uh, Ty Summers getting back on the practice field this week. Um, I you know, don't know necessarily if he will be available for the playoffs, but, uh, but if he is, uh, what do you think he can uh, bring to the units if he's back out there? Obviously, he brings uh, experience to the units. Uh, he is one of our leaders, and uh, he's done a great job uh, the, the past few weeks of, of uh, in the classroom of leading and, and using teachable moments and echoing some of the coaching uh, from his vantage point and from the guy's vantage point. So having him back on the field would be huge. Ryan Wood. On the extra point, it, it looked like the snap and hold were, were pretty good. Is that just one that, that Mason just missed, yeah. or is there something? Yeah. Operation was awesome. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Uh, yeah, operation was awesome from that standpoint. Mason, he towed the ball, and he missed it. So that, that is on Mason. Mark Daniels. Hey, Maurice, how you doing? Hey, Mark. Uh, good to see you. Uh, you know, now that David's off kind of the reserve COVID, uh, and he sure displayed – Sure hands for you. Uh, are you inclined to get him back in the return? Uh, once again, whoever's available to us, that's who we'll use. I will tell you, he, he, he catches the ball very naturally. Amari's catching the ball very well. Uh, the question came up uh, last week, uh, who else do you have in the bullpen? Uh, we have several other guys right now that's catching the ball at a high level. Uh, and it, it's good to have these guys available and up and uh, ready to rock and roll. So uh, once we find out who our opponent is and uh, we know who's up, uh, uh, we, we feel like we have some choices now, and that's a good thing. Bill Huber. Hey, Mo, how you doing? Hey, Bill. Hey, um, what do you think of your punt return? You've had, I think, I want to say seven returns of 15 yards. You've had back-to-back -back games of 20-something. It seemed like you figured out something there. Yeah, I tell you what, the guys uh, uh, are doing a good job on the outside, first of all. Uh, Razul Douglas uh, does a great job at the corner spot controlling their gunners. Uh, Stokes uh, has been a part of that as well, along with Ike uh, and, and a few others. So it starts with those guys on the outside, and then interiorly, uh, these guys have done a good job with their holdups. Uh, in addition to that, since we've pressured a lot more, you know, teams are, are in the protection mode, uh, so they, they're they're protecting before they get out, which is allowing us to have a little more room and separation to get started. Steve McGargy. It looks like you're probably going to have Randall Cobb back for the playoffs. Would he be one of those options 
as a return man as well, or is he kind of focusing exclusively on offense for the postseason? No, Randall. If he's up and he's uh, and and he's available to uh, to the game day roster, he is definitely an option. Mike Clemens. You're on mute, uh, Mike. As you, you, you guys won a lot of close ball games this year, but as you get into the postseason, is there any more emphasis on your onsides return and onsides kick squads? Yes, sir. We have a, a, a system and a routine on how we uh, practice those and when we practice them. Uh, the, the emphasis is not heightened. Uh, it's just a continuation of what we've been doing and what we've been preparing all year. Yes, sir. Ryan Wood. It's been a, a pretty long season for you with a lot to, you know, it seems every week, the stuff to, to, to coach up and, and correct and fix. Um, where's your level of confidence now that you've gotten to the end of this regular season and, and this, your special teams units being ready to go for the playoffs? Well, the level of confidence has never wavered. Uh, it has always been a process. Uh, we knew going in with our, what our challenges would be, and it was our goal to just try to get a little bit better each and every week. It was also our goal to keep that locker room intact, keep the young men intact who we have, and keep them in a positive mindset. Uh, somebody was teasing me a few weeks ago about being positive Pete, uh, and, and that was the approach we took. So we're very confident going forward, uh, and we feel good about the upcoming opponents uh, uh, who, who, who we could face. And uh, we're excited to continue to get better each week um, as well um, the way we have been the last uh, few weeks. Kyle, go ahead. Hey, Mo, you just mentioned how you got, you said that you wanted the guys to kind of just keep together in the locker room. How close is this unit, um, you know, in the locker room? Uh, it's very close, and uh, it, it's – gotten closer over the week, especially in the middle portion of the season uh, where things weren't necessarily going a as the plan. Um, uh, the beautiful part is they could see in the classroom how close we re really were. To the uninitiated, to those who may not study it as much, it just looks like a disaster. But when those guys dissect and XOG the film and understand the film, they're like, man, guys, we're right there. And they want to do it not for themselves. Now they want to do it for each other. And that's the beautiful thing of a locker room. Uh, I was telling a coach uh, the other day that uh, one thing about coaching, the beautiful thing about coaching, is when you see the switch go on in certain individuals, when uh, when what you see in them, they they now see in themselves and just manifesting that. So uh, we're encouraged going forward. Can I follow up on that? Um, for you, have you seen one player maybe or a group of players that have stepped up Absolutely. It's, uh, several guys come to mind, and I'll start with a guy who's not actually on our units, but his give a care meter about special teams is very high, and that's Alan Lazard. Uh, you know, he's not on our units actively, but he comes to the meetings, he pays attention, uh, he gives his input. So uh, guys like that have been a, a big encouragement uh, for those units to get and to continue to get better. Mark Daniels. Yeah, Mo, I just got one more. Um, advantages, disadvantage to the special teams kicking game in a really cold game. Yes. Well, obviously, uh, in a really, really cold game, and, and that's what is being projected right now, you're going to lose five to seven yards off, off your distances. Um, also, uh, anytime handling the ball, whether it's the, the holders, whether it's the actual punter himself, uh, you, you have to make sure that our hands are nice and warm and, and – utilize some tricks of the trade to make sure we have proper grip on the ball. Same with the returners who are returning. So um, we're used to it, though. Uh, this, is our, this is our element. We practice outside. We love being outside. And we're going to use it to our advantage. And there's, there's just no way in Arizona and L.A. or a warm weather team can replicate that. It would be very hard to replicate it. Um, you know, being from the South originally, we would try to come up with different uh, ideas and things to replicate that, and you can't replicate what's here. This is, this is different.